Good morning. Welcome to Fibertown. I'm Emily. I'm Chain of Fools on Ravelry, and I am Fibertown on Instagram. And this is Alice. We're here today in my living room. Oh, excuse me. I'm getting comfy on the couch here. It is spring break. There are children around, so I've given instructions to um, leave me alone unless it's an emergency. So we'll, we'll see what constitutes an emergency today. You never know what it could be. I'm sorry. I'm going to... I'm not used to this setup. Here we are on my couch. Behind us is my craft room. It used to be my dining room. Nothing in that hand, Alice. As you can see, there's Pam, my dressmaker's dummy. She's wearing my fin sweater. Um, my, my sun porch is right out there where I record in the summer. And you can see my knitting needles. Um, in, in that doorway is my kitchen and my living room and my six-year-old. <laughs> uh, my 11-year-old is still asleep. We are full on, full on uh, teenage, let's try to sleep all morning. So I'm going to let her do it today because I need to record. I need to say hello to you guys. So I have a lot to talk about today. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, let me welcome a few new folks who introduce themselves. We have, oh, I forgot to say, it's episode 62 and it is April 16th, 2014. It snowed here last night and hailed and sleeted and was generally disgusting and it's freezing today and Alice, no, stay here with me. I'm on the couch, people want to see you. Um, she wants to go see what my son's eating, probably he'll just let her go. You go if you want. There she goes. Okay, so hello to Autumn Party, who is Tanya from Montréal, Quebec. And um, she just got her first wheel, so congrats. That is awesome. It's a Kiwi too. I hope that's going well for you. The, the getting to know your wheel period can be an adjustment. So if you're having trouble, don't give up. Uh, let's see, we also have Dutch Girl 63 Ooh, and I forgot to write down her first name. But she's from Vancouver, BC. She runs a dog resort, and she has two, her, she posted two photos of her um, elderly chihuahuas, and they both seemed to love fiber, and they were adorable. Uh, so thanks for introducing yourself. And then we have Hokey Knits, who is, let's see, she is Jessie from Virginia. She's, she's not far from me in Fredericksburg, and she's a Hokey, which is, I guess she graduated from Virginia Tech as did my brother. Um, do you know what a hokey is? That's the mascot of Virginia Tech. It is a castrated turkey. New word for you if you didn't know already. H-O-K-I-E, hokey. Isn't that interesting? That school has hokies as a mascot. I guess they're an agricultural, traditionally agricultural school. But they do a lot of other stuff. Very interesting technical stuff. And she has an English bulldog. <laughs> There is almost nothing cuter than an English bulldog puppy. Oh my word. Um, maybe a Boston Terrier puppy. Uh, let's see, she is a new knitter, so how fabulous. There's a whole world out there, as I'm sure you know. So welcome, welcome to everybody. Hello, I'm glad you're here. Alice has found a sunnier spot. Maybe she'll be back later. Um, Autism Craft Along with um, Pen, Hook and Needle and Equal Opportunity Crafter. Uh, is going very well. We have some FOs already. Gorgeous, gorgeous, colorful stuff. And I need to make an amendment to the rules, which I did make in the written rules in the thread. Um, you don't need to use three colors, two or more bright colors. Does that make it easier? I misspoke. It should be two colors. And I got a prize in the mail for that craft along, one of many. Okay. I'd love to take it out of the bag, but no, I'm not going to because it's so nicely wrapped. This was so generously donated by um, Seashore Sharon. I'm so thrilled that she was able to make us a bag, and it is stunning. I love this bag. It's This fabric is beautiful. It's little beehives. And look look at the, the, the pull. It's a little bee. Oh my goodness. And she's wrapped it up with this cute ribbon. It is a zipper. It's a wedge bag. See, it's folded right there. But it looks like it'll stand up on its own. It's got interfacing. And 
it's beautiful. You could probably fit a small shawl in there. Definitely socks. Thank you, Sharon. This is gorgeous. So this, so this will be one prize. We also have three patterns from Kimberlally. She will donate three of her beautiful designs. Um, shoot, I should have looked up the rest of the prizes before I did this. There are going to be lots of others, and I will show you as we go along. Um, this craft along will go until the end of May, May 31st, and you can weave, spin, knit, crochet, not so for this one. You can still enter those objects in if you sew a craft bag in the April and May FO threads. Not a problem. You can enter your autism FOs in the monthly FO thread as well as the autism thread. So, yes. Alrighty. So today we have finished objects, works in progress, spinning, a magazine review, sort of, um, a new segment, Ask Fiber Town, and then I have um. I have one bit of sewing to show you guys. So here we go. Finished objects. I'm going to call this a finished object. Do you see this? This is a sweater that I frogged a few days ago. Um, this was my Rocky Coast by Hannah Fettig out of Malabrigo Rios in Paris Night. And I bought this yarn at Webb's when I went there uh, two or three years ago. And can you believe that this is a sweater? Isn't it a ma kind of magical that we can make a garment out of this? The Rocky Coast never fit me properly. Um, it seems to fit a lot of people beautifully. It's a beautiful sweater but it never stayed on my shoulders correctly. Um, and I kind of feel like it needed seams. Um, it was a heavy, a worsted cabled sweater. I feel like it could have benefited, at least for my size, from seams, from structure. So the yarn is too gorgeous to be not worn. So I frogged it, and the impetus for frogging it was a new sweater pattern that came out that I saw that I love. And let me just show you guys what it looks like. It's called the Boxy. It's by Hohi Locatelli. And you do pronounce it Hohi. Um, let's see. It's called the Worsted Boxy. And she has one that's in, I think, fingering weight. It's And it's huge. It looks like a really easy to wear sweater. Um, the name, Boxy. I don't think there's any shaping. Um, here we go. But I think it'll knit up super quickly in a worsted um, stockinette in the round kind of scenario. And I feel like my camera is having a hard time focusing because of all of the background <sighs> stuff. This is why I don't usually record here. Okay. Apologies for the lack of focus here. There's Hohi. And that's the worsted boxy. So pretty. Um, the sleeves are quite skinny, but you can see in this one, look at that. Wow! So I saw that that sweater was out and I said, my Paris night needs to be that. So that's what I'll do. Um, so I'm calling it an FO in a tongue in cheek kind of way because it's a finished frogged object. My second FO I am wearing, and this is Shield Maiden. And this is out with my test knitters right now. We're finding all sorts of interesting things for me to um, tweak on it. Um, I'll tell you more about Shield Maiden um, when I get closer to publishing the pattern, but you can see it's a crescent-shaped shawl. I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little about it now. Very easy to wear. It's a shawlette, rather, out of DK weight yarn. It has a cabled border. Wait, that's the wrong side. <laughs> it has a cabled border. 
and then a very drapey loose gauge stockinette um, body and it has a very simple lace motif I don't know if you can see that very well I put up a and it's about a five foot wingspan so pretty substantial um, wingspan you can do this with one skein plus a little bit more of a DK weight and I used cephalopod traveler you can wear this a lot of different ways you can wear it as a chalette oh cephalopod traveler in Maison du Peuple was the colorway so you can wear it like this or um, sorry wrapped around I like to wear it like I wear my cedar leaf chalette which is the motif in the front and I'll tell you more about the motif later but it's and the inspiration for this pattern I like to wear it as I was before like this it's really easy to wear fast to knit fun to knit yeah okay I'm not happy with that um let me do this again I knit the borders I'll see it's knit on pretty large needles so sevens eights and yeah it's inspired by the show the Vikings and spe uh, specifically the shield maidens and I'm calling this actual project Lagertha who was a legendary shield maiden and they kind of did sort of they were kind of gender benders these women who fought in um, in raids and Viking raids and as well as defending their homes and they so they were moved to be warriors uh, as well as they seem to be able to go between that gender role and then doing domestic roles um, mothers weavers um, the lace motif is that oh, I should have brought it a lucette a Viking cord making tool and the cable is inspired by both the cord, braided cord made by a lucette as well as the braids that the shield maidens wear in their hair in the show, which the hairstyles are amazing. I guess you need to keep your long hair out of your face when you're doing battle. So, yeah. So that's just a little bit about the shield maiden, and I'll show you more about it later as it's ready to be released. Um, if you want to see pictures of it, I've put up a preview on Ravelry. Again, Shield Maiden. And um, just, you know, type that in your pattern search and you should be able to find it. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping to get it published by the first week in May. So, yay. That's my FO. Um, once I got the right, the construction I wanted for it, it was, it was a super fast knit. Where is my water here? I'm going to talk about my water later in Ask Fiber Town. Okay, so you can see my, my yarn stash over here. There's my fiber stash right there, some of it. And here we are back here. All right, um, let's talk about works in progress. Nothing much has happened with my lollipop yarn sock. I finished the ribbing. Did I show you this? I don't remember if I showed you the finished ribbing. I'm onto the stockinette, but just it's not getting worked on. Um, with this, with finishing this and working on my bare branches, um, just hasn't happened. I'm into my sixth ball of yarn on the bare branches. That's by Alana Dacos. I'm knitting it on US size eights, and that's, excuse me, five millimeters. I'm on the second front. Goes very fast when I actually work on it. And I did do some on this last night. Um, so I don't know if it'll be ready by early May. Maybe if I really dedicate myself to it. If I don't end up making another shield maiden, that is, because I'm tempted to. So bare branches. Um, so I have the back, one front, and about half of the other front. Not too bad. And then I cast on the Collie Wobbles. You guys remember remember the pole, right? 
Um, the winner of the yarn poll for the Collie Wobbles was Enchanted Knoll Farms. Enchanted Knoll Farm. There we go. Superwash Sock Yarn. It's Merino Nylon in the Common Grackle colorway. Um, the yarn in the, in the cake is gorgeous. But when it's knit, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Look at the collie wobbles. They're so much fun when they start to appear. I've got maybe three repeats done on them. And here is the back. It's so beautiful in person. It just glows. This colorway is amazing. There we go. Stretch it out a little. So I'm knitting these on, this is my pattern. It's a fun pattern to knit. Um, Kitchen Stitches, Summer Yarns is knitting a pair of these. And Memers of the Hudson Valley Knits podcast just finished hers and they're gorgeous. Um, what did I want to say? Oh yes, these are being knit on my Carbons DPNs and they are US one and a half, 2.5 millimeters. They are in my very wrinkly paella bag, paella rice bag. This was the, how much, 11 pounds? Five kilo bag <laughs> of rice that we just finished. Um, my husband makes a mean paella. So yeah, I decided to keep the bag and make a project bag out of it. Okay, that's it for works in progress. Um, spinning, okay. Into the world, Serenity Bat, Falkland Carded Bat. I bought, I have spun two of these bats. The first one was Vegetable Medley, and I got both at Maryland Sheep and Wool, and I have Maryland Sheep and Wool on the brain, as you may imagine. And um, I really wanted to sort of get, move this from fiber stash to spun yarn stash. And I'm going to show you some pictures of it. Let me show you the finished object first. Here we go. It has not been washed, and there's a reason for that. I'll maybe talk about that later. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It is barber pole delightfulness. So that was Falkland. It's the first time I'd spun Falkland. And Falkland is um, not a specific breed but it's any sheep that comes from the Falkland Islands. And I do believe, I mean, it could be Merino, it could be Lincoln, Polworth, a mix, probably a lot of um, crossbreeds. Let's see, I'm, I could be wrong, I'm making that up. So I'm gonna show you some pictures of the bat before it was spun because they're just astounding. These into the world bats, oh my goodness. Okay, that's what it looked like in its bag, gorgeous. And that had been in my stash for a year and it was in beautiful shape. The drafting is, there's just nothing to it. It drafts itself. Uh, I unrolled it, but it is still folded up. And here it is. Eh, okay, there's Alice on my front mat in my front door. She's in the sunshine. That's it unfolded. It's bigger than my doormat. What kind of carter does this woman have that makes a bat bigger than a doormat? It's huge. So what I decided to do with it was, you can see that it's, it's lavenders and dark purples and then this magenta and then a pink and then a cream. And it was a true cream, like a yellowy cream, uh, untreated, undyed. So what I did was I split it in the middle of the magenta um, so that I had lavender, purple, and half the magenta, and then half the magenta, and then pink and cream. And I, so I split it down the middle, and the purples with the magentas, I sort of split, 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 and I spun this mainly from the fold. And I wanted to, I didn't really overthink 
how I was gonna spin it because there's just so many ways you can spin a bat. The other bat I spun um, each color separately and Navajo applied it. Um, this one I just I grouped the colors together and then I made strips from them and I spun them from the fold intending to combine the colors as they wanted to go. And so I didn't really think about it too much. It's still got a lot of energy in it. You can see it's, um, see right there? It has not been, the twist has not been set. You can see it's just still quite twisty. So I have not washed it. What I usually do is I put it in um, a sink with warm soapy water, well, it's with soak, and I let it sit for 15 minutes, and then I take it out, and you can, when you put it in the water, you can, if you have your hands on the wool, you can feel it just sort of go, ah, and it relaxes. And then the twist, if it, there's, twist is built up more in one place than the other, you, it just sort of equalizes along the skein. So then after I take it out of the water, I sort of, I double it up, I gently squeeze all the water out, I put it in a towel. Actually, I have an old bathrobe that's terry cloth I use for this purpose, and it lives in my bathroom because I wash so many fibery things all like a couple of weeks. So I keep this bathrobe and a hook in my bathroom. I lay it on the floor, I roll this up in the bathrobe, and just kind of walk on it, and it gets a lot of the excess water out. And then when it's um, not dripping water, I just sort of do this. And then I hang it up to dry. It's got a twist in it there. Not too much. But I think this will be beautiful yarn. It's a two-ply, of course. Oh, so I spun, let's see, the first bobbin. There's the pinks. Pinks and creams with the magenta. And do I have a picture of the other bobbin? No, I didn't have to take a picture of the purple bobbin. But look, there's there it is being plied. So a two-ply. And I think mittens, mittens and a hat. It's 250, 250 yards of a two-ply. So mittens and a hat. I'm not sure of the wraps per inch. Looks to me like a DK or light worsted. Um, I spun it from the fold, long draw. Um, it was a lot of fun. Very fast and satisfying, and I'm in love with the barber pulling. So I said I didn't really overthink the spin, and I really like the results. So, other spinning. <clears throat> I have my trindle, which I got from Gail's Art a couple Maryland sheep and wools ago. I have two sets of arms for it. Um, these are the lighter ones, my little skulls. And I've been spinning Van Gogh by Gourmet Stash. Van Gogh's paint box. I showed you guys this a while ago. There's the the end of this particular puny. And look at that. It's got such a range of greens. It has a chartreuse, a lime, and then this sort of goldy browny green. It's not really accurately reflect reflected by the camera, as always. There we go. But you can see the browns in this particular part of the punies, and then that the amazing blues underneath. So I have quite a few of these left. Beautiful. And really enjoying this spin, so. Oh my goodness. Um, and I'm gonna talk more about Gourmet Stash later. Let's see. Okay, so. Fleece. Will I be getting another fleece at Maryland Sheep and Wool? I don't know. I might. I might. Uh, I don't have anything in particular that I am looking for, but you never know. So, you may know that I have currently two fleeces in my house, and they're both clean, and I am processing the thin one. I've dyed it in the locks. You saw that. It was that midnight blue. Um, and I've been combing it. And that's going slowly, but it's okay. Um, 
It's so lovely to comb. So I have also a Cotswold Coopworth lamb's fleece that I got at um, Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival. Look at that. Just precious, 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 precious. Look at the shine. Look at the crimp. This is a long wool. It is a lamb. It's so soft. And it's not that long. You can tell it's a lamb. First shearing. So this, these are the locks. Look at how curly and precious they are. So look at that. That's one lock. What is that stretched out? Maybe three inches. So we're not talking like Wensleydale crazy curly long locks. Maybe it's second shearing will be longer. But these are super fun. And what I have been doing is flicking them to open them up. And there are some shortcuts in this fleece. So for example, there's the there's the end that is growing off of the lamb and this is the end right here that is closer to the skin and occasionally you will I'm finding when a shearer had to go back over the lamb with the shears um, that's when you get second cuts so for example there'll be little tiny bits like this long and they do cause neps in your fiber little bits, little nubbly bits that you may or may not want. I don't want them in this. So what I've been doing, I have this little, it's not technically a flicker, but it does the job. Um, I've just been flicking and it just opens up the locks. Let's see, it's opening up already. And we're getting fluff and then I grab it like the flicked end and I take the end that's close to the skin and I do the same thing. And I've also been just flicking directly on my drum carter. Um, but then I'm finding that the neps get in there quite a bit. If there are any, they get stuck in the drum carter. So look at that. So the lock goes from looking like this to a little ball of fluff, a little thing of fluff. So that gives you an idea. I have a whole giant basket of these locks. Gives you an idea of how much work goes into hand processing. Now this could be opened up a bit more. You can still see some of the crimp is together. But I've done, yesterday I was at my drum carter Quite a while I was flicking the locks and then carding a bunch and I've got these little mini bats that I made each one is about an ounce a little bit less sometimes it smells like lanolin still and I've gotten most of the veg matter out it's not a great deal in this one the judge that took a look at this fleece noted that it would make a beautiful lace yarn so I don't know I don't know what it'll be yet. There's the little bat opened up, and here are some more batlings. Um, so it's been fun working on this, and it's gotten some stress out for me. Just take the flicker, flick the locks. Okay. There's another one. So this is, I mean, so few. <laughs> I barely made a dent in this fleece and it's not a big fleece so it's gonna it's gonna go for a while so I may or may not get another fleece it'll just have to depend on if what I see makes my heart sing or not that is it for spinning and fiber I have a magazine look-see I'm not gonna review it I don't do reviews I you know you have to be comprehensive to do reviews to do pros and cons. I'm just going to show you what I like. I'm not going to show you what I don't like. Okay. <clears throat> Interweave knits. How long has it been since I've bought one of these? A year at least. I just haven't been inspired by them. And there's so many great self-published patterns on Ravelry that I've had more than enough to knit. However, there are 
five or six things in here that I liked. The first, well, I did like the cover photo, but look at those shoulders. That's not going to stay on. So, nope. Maybe if you're 19, you could wear this. I'm not 19. That's okay. But I do love this one. This is a um, meltwater pullover. It's a ice. It's sort of a reinterpreted um, Lopa Pesa, an Icelandic sweater. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which I'm sort of intrigued by. Oh, look who's hello. It's okay. Then I also really like this one for my daughter, and this one is called the. Lovebird sweater. It's by Donna K. Oh, the first sweater was by Kate Gagnon Osborne. Anyway, this Lovebird sweater is a cute, darling little colorwork sweater. And what I am intrigued by is that it's not seamed. The yoke is done in one piece, so there's no steaking. I'm intrigued. Um, you know, Heartland Knits, Vicki, she's having a knit along right now that's um, bird related. Anything with a bird on it. How cool is that? So I like those two colorwork sweaters. So already the magazine's probably worth me getting it. What are the other ones? Oh, there is a detail of the birds. Oops, sorry, there's the pattern. Not enough that you can knit a sweater but I wanted to show you that detail. It has an interesting article on um, different methods of colorwork knitting. It has some cute shawls. And it has this sweater right here, which I think would be great in hand spun. It's very simple raglan. The sleeves are lace. I don't know if you can see that. See the sleeves are lace right there. And that is called the Brick Lane Pullover. It's a baseball raglan style. So I think that's very cute. I would make it a little longer, but I really like that one. Um, so that's, how many is that? Three? Three patterns I like? No, there's one or two that are big misses for me. Okay, and then this these two I like as well. This is the Zephyrine cardigan by Angela Hahn, and it's knit with a metal wool blend. It's very flattering. I like the vertical lines. And then this one is the Malay jacket by Veronique Avery, knit out of Blue Sky Alpaca's Metallico. That's kind of, that would be fun to wear. So, quite a few things. Now, where will they get knit? Who knows? But I thought they were, I liked enough of the sweaters in here to go ahead and add this magazine to my collection. They also talk about the fiber factor, that show that I watched on YouTube. So, so that was Interweave Knits, and that is um, spring 2014. Can you hear the Legos? <laughs> There's a cascade of Legos in the other room. Okay, Ask Fibertown. I opened a thread called Ask Fibertown, and you can just ask me anything. I may answer it, I may not. Um, I had two questions. I'm gonna try to answer both. Oh my goodness, I've been talking today. Um, the first one is from Apple380, and she said, <laughs> Let me just say word for word what she said. She said, she had a question about this, which made me laugh. Alrighty. Okay. Ask Fibertown. It's stickied on the RAV group, so go ahead and take a look. Let's see, this is what Apple 380 says. Let's see, I do have a question. Why do you drink from a jam jar? How did this come about? Do you keep the lid to screw on the top, kind of like a flask? 
Ha ha, do tell. Okay, <laughs> this made me laugh. Apple 380. This looks like a jam jar. It is not. It is a pickle jar, <laughs> which makes it even better. Um, my children have a slight addiction to kosher dill pickles from Trader Joe's. Um, they love them. So I have a lot of these jars. And a year or two ago when I was making this craft room, converting it from a dining room to a craft room because we never used it as a dining room. It seemed silly to keep it. So um, I, I had started saving the pickle jars with the lids, um, figuring there's got to be a use for these at some point because we would get, I don't know, three a month. That's how bad the pickle thing was. They have since slowed down. They're out of their pickle phase. But I had so many of these that I used them as um, storage jars for my knitting needles. And the drinking part came about because I, I like to have large quantities of water on hand. And this will hold 19 or 20 ounces. I don't know how many liters that is, but it's at least three cups, maybe four. Uh, and still, I don't know how many liters that is. Oops, metric. Um, so, I and I like a wide mouth. And so I just, most of my glasses now are pickle jars. I do have some smaller glasses for, um, you know, other uses, juice or, you know, if we're doing our, like a rustic Italian wine, we'll have them in small glasses. So, I also thought these would be great for storing dye stock, if you do have the lid, and I have used it for that. Um, but they're just awesome. They have so many uses, and uh, I just had saved maybe 15, and I'm sure there are uses I haven't discovered yet. But I like drinking from a wide mouth, like a mason jar. And I'm buying the pickles anyway, I might as well use the jars. Uh, my, the pickles we like are from Trader Joe's, which is an American um, fabulous market. Uh, small, accessible, they have all sorts of goodies all the time. Different new goodies popping up. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, I have another question from Phyllis Joan, 46. Phyllis Joan, I'm running long, so I'm going to answer it next week. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to pop over to the Ask Fibertown thread. Okay, um, if you, if your name is Kate and you own the business Gourmet Stash, I'm going to need you to leave for just a minute, okay? Okay, Kate? You gone? Don't watch this. If you want to be surprised. Okay. She's gone, right? So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about her. Um, myself and a few other of her friends are going to help her this weekend to get ready for Maryland Sheep and Wool. We'll just do sort of the labeling and some of the dirty work and, um, and just help her out. And it should be like, it should be very fun. But she has given so much to my podcast, um, pri amazing prizes to give away to you guys. Um, and she's just been a really great friend. So I wanted, uh, when I went up to help her, to bring her something special. Now, Kate is into villains. I don't judge. She's into villains, and specifically, she loves um, Slytherin, Harry Potter house, where all of the evil wizards come from. So um, I went on Spoonflower and found a couple of fabrics that I thought she'd like, and I made her a project bag. Uh, it hasn't been pressed yet. I made her a cute little project bag with some Slytherin Argyle. And then on the inside, we have the symbol of the Deathly Hollows. So the Resurrection Stone, the Elder Wand, and the Cloak of Invisibility. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so, very, very fun to make. I hope she likes it. All right. Kate, you can come back now. 
come back. You can come back. Okay. That's pretty much it, you guys. Um, Maryland Sheep and Wool is two and a little bit more weeks away, and I'm getting very excited. Uh, I'm so looking forward to the weekend away. My husband will be coming, and we really need the time away. Last Friday, well, last week, we had a water main leak on our street, and it happened to be right in front of our house. And a water company jackhammered the street, fixed the leak. The next day, we started having plumbing problems. And it turns out that they nicked the sewage line when they were fixing the water main leak. Now you may think that they'll just come back and fix that, right? No. There's a bizarre process that has gone through where we have to hire somebody to verify that the problem is on county property and not on our property. Then permits have to be acquired and massive amounts of money have to be gotten that will supposedly be reimbursed. Massive amounts of money. <sighs> Serenity now. Hopefully work will begin tomorrow to fix the problem. Uh, it might begin Friday, depending on the permits. So we have been with very limited sewer capabilities. Yeah, I will leave your, you know, imagination to run wild. They will pay for a hotel if we need it. Fingers crossed, we've just been doing the minimal washing. We haven't done laundry. That goes to the sewer. We haven't done run the dishwasher. <laughs> the dishwasher. <laughs> you remember my dishwasher problems, right? It's been almost a week. You know, laundry's getting low. It was warm enough to turn on the sprinkler one day this weekend and run around in that. Come on, oh, you're back. But last night it snowed here, and Alice is freezing today. It snowed here in April, on April 15th. So I've gone from having the air conditioning on to cool off the bedrooms. Come here, babe. Come here. To having to turn on the heat this morning because it was um, it was 59 degrees in my house. Oh, what a lovely girl. So, serenity now. That's all I'm saying. A few more days, we'll hold on. Hope for the best. Hope nothing overflows or backs up. Uh, yeah. Anyway, very much looking forward to that getaway and uh, so you all, I hope you all are having just excellent plumbing where you are and excellent fiber stuff. And Alice, we're going to have to take this girl out for a walk today. Oh, oh, oh. do you like your walkies? She went to the vet the other day just for a, a routine thing. Oh, please not in the mouth. Don't do a sweet girl. Yes, indeed. All right, so keep your up your um, autism colorful craft alongness and all of that jazz. If you're on Instagram, you've seen plenty of photos and videos of Alice lately. Alice shenanigans. Oh, you're so warm from being in the sunshine. Mm. She's a dear, a dear girl. All right, you guys, I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Take care.